Chautauqua County Sheriff Joseph Jurassi. Uh, Sheriff, thanks for being here with us. Happy my, Friday. My pleasure. Happy Friday to you, too. <laughs> nice Friday. We're all in agreement. But a big vote next Thursday. Big day for you uh, with the conservative primary. How's that going thus far? Well, it's hard to tell. You know, mm -hmm. obviously we're campaigning, and uh, this is the first time I've run in a primary. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, I've been endorsed by the conservatives five different times. Mm -hmm. Uh, this year they chose to uh, give both candidates the opportunity to ballot, so we will have a uh, mini election on the 13th next Thursday. How important is it, you said you've received the conservative uh, um, endorsement a lot, how important is that as the uh, campaign season rolls on? Well, I think it's very important, and uh, the, the party has supported me in the past, and uh, hopefully they will going forward. One of your uh, opponent's biggest promises, is, if elected sheriff, is that he wants to try to further collaboration um, in the county. And, uh, you know, we wanted to ask you, uh, you know, if you're currently, as Chautauqua County Sheriff, um, you know, people are, are uh, obviously working together on some level, you know, county dispatch, dispatches all of the, the police agencies. Um, would you do more collaboration if re-elected? And um, you know, what, what are you doing now to, to continue to work together? Well, I'll start with the last question first, if you don't mind. We, yeah. we do a lot of things together. The forensic identification team, we have a countywide SWAT team, we, we have information sharing, we all on one information platform, meaning our records management, our computer-aided dispatch. And I continue to look for places to share services and I'm wide open to any that we haven't thought of. But uh, absolutely, we're better as a team than working individually. And part of that, um, excuse me, I was looking at the wrong thing there. But um, well, I, I think what you were probably getting at, Matt, is you know obviously a lot of people are concerned, Sheriff, with mm -hmm. public safety mm -hmm. and in yes. in the county. You know, this is a, an important election for that, as mm -hmm. a, you are the top law enforcement official here. Um, you know, preparing your deputies is 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 key, mm -hmm. and obviously. Uh, uh, candidate Quattrone, you know, he uh, is an instructor or was an instructor in the academy. You know, mm -hmm. he worked with that. We talked with him about that uh, on Wednesday when he was on. Um, you know, you, you have a lot of uh, kind of quotas in place for uh, new deputies coming in, right? Well, I won't call them quotas. We have a, a tremendous training academy, one of a kind in the state of New York, one that's been replicated and attempted to be replicated, which is the highest form of flattery. Yeah. Uh, so deputies receive much more training than they are required to by the state of New York. And what I've done is embedded the EMT training into the academy in order to produce more EMTs because I am of the belief that uh, we can make a difference in people's lives than we have been. And I've got now tw over 20 full-time deputies that are EMTs, me included, you lead by example, and uh, nine part-timers, and our, obviously our intent is to improve public safety. And I've done that, you know, and we'll continue to grow that program. I've also made other improvements to our 911 system, first in the state of New York to implement what's called Smart 911. And uh, there are many, many other things that I've been able to do, and my goal is to make this the safest place it can possibly be. And that EMT program is really important, and you know, you're just sharing with us in the newsroom that uh, since you are an EMT yourself, you've responded to uh, calls. Obviously, there aren't that many deputies always who are uh, patrolling. You have big areas to patrol, but it, it does make a difference with you know, the majority, it seems like, of calls are, um, you know, for medical emergencies. Well, the, that's true of the fire service calls, but uh, we aren't always going to be right there, but there are occasions where we might be, and if we're not uh, the first EMT there, we st absolutely can be of assistance and, and uh, make a difference in people's lives. And with all the requirements to be an EMT and all the uh, really unfortunate reduction of volunteerism, yeah. Uh, this is a, a, you know, it can be a stopgap to help people, and, and we think about it, what's most important to us. And, you know, it's our friends and family, ourselves, and, and we want to get people that assistance they need as fast as they can get it. Sheriff, can you talk a little bit about the countywide public safety radio system that you applied? 
Sure. Uh, we really started with an, with an obsolete radio system back in the 80s when it was first purchased. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's taken us a good number of years because of funding, and we don't have time to get into all the details. But we were able to obtain a, a significant grant, a $6 million grant, to build a new public safety radio system for Chautauqua County, one that gives us true interoperability, meaning we can talk between the fire department and the police agencies and, and uh, EMS. Before we couldn't do that, we had to relay through 911, which is the wrong thing because they're busy at a time of crisis. So, and we didn't have countywide coverage and we're 1,069 square miles. It's a big county with a lot of tough terrain, gorges and hills and, mm -hmm. and uh, you name it. And so through this grant and other funding that we obtained through grant, other grant funding, we're able to implement the, the system, which is it's just un unbelievable. But I can talk end to end of the county from a portable to a portable, and it's imperative in a, in a crisis. And you look at things like the September 11th or the Hurricane Katrina, one of the first things that you, you'll learn is that communications failed. And that's what we're trying to prevent from happening, and we're trying to give the best radio system possible. It's a continued work in progress as we try to even further enhance it as the years come and funding becomes available. And, you know, on the point of communication and, and connections, I mean, you've recently uh, have worked with school systems. Uh, I believe Pat Pine Valley and Clymer uh, was the most recent. Uh, we see here you were with the officials there getting sheriff substations. You know, that, that's right. important to further kind of the deputies' outreach as well, right? Oh, no question about it. And school safety is on the forefront of all our minds. And uh, these two uh, schools, but it, there's more. We also have a substation at the Hughes, Boses, and at Laguitas. Uh, but these are areas where we can use that facility uh, to, to do reports, to interview, and do our work out in the field, uh, and give some additional police presence to that, to that school system. We also are involved in the SRO program. We have SROs at Silver Creek and at Forestville, um, now at Maple Grove, Bemis School System, and then the Hughes Center, Laguitas, and the Alt Eds facility in Casadega. So school safety is something that's very important, and we're not going to stop. I have a lot more that we need to do that I want to do, including uh, connectivity with the schools, uh, so we could look at their cameras in case of an emergency if necessary. So that's a work in progress right now. And, and, and I'm sorry to cut you off, man. I know you're going to ask the next question, but uh, just to follow up on that, the SRO issue, when you, when you see these horrible school shootings mm -hmm. across the nation, you know, having officers in the building and, and certainly sounding like a camera program where, you know, you, your law enforcement experts could see what's going on, you know, that could prevent a crisis. It could. And, and really the, the school resource officers program is something I've spoken to about a lot. And, and I, I wish that we had more funding available for the schools because they are in this terrible struggle of what do we give up to get an SRO. And uh, it's not just the SRO being there for security. It's really a triad. They're there to mentor. They're there to, to really be, have their ear to the ground and work with the kids and, and recognize problems that might be developing. And they're there to, as a resource. So we expect them to be in the classroom talking about things that are relevant, uh, teaching them what, you ha what skills that a law enforcement officer might have to have that should apply in high school, like math and sciences. And, right. and, uh, but they're also there to help secure the facility, work on the safety plan, and be connected to the system. Could you see more substations in the future, maybe, throughout the county? Well, we would look at that and to see if, uh, if it is a, a win-win for both the district and for the sheriff's office, and uh, absolutely an open to that uh, if it makes sense for both parties. Awesome. Uh, Sheriff, we have much more, uh, many more questions coming up, but we do have to take a break. Uh, again, if anyone in the comments has something that they would like to ask Sheriff Jirasi, of course, we will take a look at it and uh, pass it along to him. Uh, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter with a look at our weekend and then more with Chautauqua County Sheriff Joe Jirasi right after this. Welcome back to New and Noteworthy. Uh, we are with Chautauqua County Sheriff Joseph Jirasi. Kevin Anderson uh, asking, 
Uh, why not just merge the rest of the county's police agencies into the uh, sheriff's department? I know uh, Quatrone was, was saying that he's very much interested in kind of furthering, uh, you know, development into something like that. But, but Sheriff Jirasi, is that something you'd be interested in or, or where are we on that? Well, consolidation is a very controversial subject with, uh, with some. We, you know, historically, uh, our country has been inherited what we call local control from England when we came here. Right. And there's over 17,000 police agencies in the United States right now. And so when you talk about uh, relinquishing local control, that's a neighborhood, a community decision. And if a community comes to the sheriff's office and say we're interested in, in talking about that, and obviously I would never turn away that conversation. But uh, that is a real, that's a local decision that has to be made because the communities identify with their law enforcement agencies. They feel like uh, it's part of their, of their neighborhood. So again, that's a lot more complicated than m one might think because you're talking about contracts right. and the Public Employees Relations Board and, and a lot goes into those discussions. So it, it, it you know, sounds very simple. It becomes very complicated. So when it, the bottom line is, you know, I'm, I have been open to discussion about that. Uh, we're not looking to go consolidate, but if somebody, if their community, that's the direction they want to go, it's ultimately their decision. A few days ago, uh, switching gears now, a viewer asked um, your opponent how he would help further uh, investigations into the number of cold cases mm -hmm. in the county. Um, do you plan on uh, seeking answers still as time goes on? Absolutely. Those cases don't just get put on a shelf and forgotten about. In fact, uh, you know, we, we have continued to investigate those, those cases. We're resubmitting evidence as the science gets better. Uh, DNA connectivity is getting better. We, we have a, you know, a window of opportunity in one of our cases that goes back a long time ago. We don't even know the identity of the victim. So with, this, with new DNA technology, we're hoping that we can get some answers there. And uh, so these cases are definitely on the forefront. Now, years ago, um, I tried to get additional funding from the county legislature for a cold case squad. That didn't go through. I didn't give up. I kept trying, but it, to this point, I haven't been successful in doing that. That doesn't mean we're not, we're not looking at these cases. We are. All right, uh, Chautauqua County Sheriff Joe Jirasi, thanks so much for being here with us today. Of course, uh, we will have much more on WNYNewsNow.com throughout the day based on this interview. And then uh, if anyone has any further questions for the sheriff, we will uh, uh, pass them along to you. And I'm okay. certain that you can uh, answer them. As and I'd be happy to do that. People want to contact me by phone or on social media. Right. You know, I, I pride myself in being accessible and uh, I'll definitely get back to you. Absolutely, and uh, they can follow you on Facebook to stay updated with the campaign. They can. Awesome. All right, Sheriff, thank you for being with us. Uh, hey, that's it for us today. Of course, uh, we're back Monday. In the meantime, news all the time at wnynewsnow.com. Have a great day.